Hello everyone, Wylock here. Welcome back. We've done it. Welcome to part 10, the finale of the Tomb of Horrors build. We have made it to the end. Today, we will build a Sirarax actual tomb, then I will lay out the entire dungeon in all its glory without compromise 100%. So without any ado, let's dive into our hobby and start crafting. And remember that our sponsor is Heroes Horde for you 3D printers out there. Excellent selection, including all True Tiles lines. Room 33, the crypt of Asirarak the Demi-Lich. Beyond the door is a smallish rectangular chamber. And as you finish doing some stuff, the floor begins to tremble. Long story short, there's a trap that causes the floor to rapidly rise toward the ceiling, potentially crushing and killing some of the players. And once the floor is risen, you realize that it's actually a mithril vault with a door in the center of it and a ring set into that. Now, for the first time ever, I am cheating. This tile does not conform to my standards. The interior play space measures five by two and a half inches with the walls on the outside. I did this because this room has no adjoining walls, so it's okay. And I wanted max play space for the minis. This is the final showdown, and it so happens to be in a very small room. Anyway, I'm gonna do the vault as an insert. So I measured out a rectangle of graphics medium chipboard, a few millimeters shorter in both directions than needed. You'll see why in a sec. And this will be the floor of the Mithril Vault. This DecoArt Americana gloss uh, silver is fantastic. It is the best metallic silver I've ever seen. One coat coverage, I mean, you can see it here in real time. It is a gorgeous silver. The front and back of the vault, I'm going to do in an arched manner. Now, I know that makes no sense since the whole thing was a trap and the, the roof of the vault you know, crush the players against the ceiling, whatever. I'm taking some artistic license here because I don't just want to make another box. I want to give you something to watch. The trick to making a perfect arch is to draw only one half of it and then trace it twice. So here you can see I'm freehand drawing the arch on one side and then I'll cut it out, mark it so that I know it's the master copy, and then trace it, flip it over to get a mirror image and trace it again. And now I have a perfectly symmetric arch. For the main walls, same material, more chipboard. Bending it a little bit, inducing a curve to help with the gluing that's about to happen. And I did use hot glue to set these because I love using hot glue wherever possible in the interest of speed. Now those end joints are a little bit rough. So here is some food box grade cardstock. It's much thinner. It has a negligible thickness. So I trace this on, cut it out, and hot glue it onto the short ends. This covers up those ugly seams. Likewise, for the roof line, I'm gonna use some white glue so that it won't bulge out like hot glue, and take just a wooden dowel or a kebab skewer, cut it to length, and set it in there. It's unintentional, but I'm realizing this kind of makes for good elven architecture, so I'm gonna remember how this turned out for future projects. Skulls, this is an evil vault thing, so gotta have a skull. Found a skull from the GW Skulls kit, mounted it on the corner, also got these picks. They have a spiked end, so I cut some of those. And oh, this is a deep cut, kids. Who remembers the gothic buildings from like two or maybe three years ago? Well, I was looking through my bin of leftovers and I found the window cutouts that I had saved. Now that is proof positive that you should never throw anything away. This is a perfect door. The whole thing gets painted up with that beautiful silver paint. And then I just found a cool looking ornate bead to hot glue to the center of the door. Off camera, I did attempt to do some recess shading and I tried some other stuff. I didn't like any result as good as I liked the plain old silver with nothing else to it. So that's what you see here. And that's what I'm going with, Mithril Vault. Inside, there is a low, dust-covered bench near the back wall of the vault. On and around it are an abundance of items. Resting on one end of it is a human skull. Let's take a look at the artwork from the original printing of the module. Okay, so there's the skull. That's the skull of a Asirarak. It's got the rubies in the eye sockets and those gemstone teeth. And how about the artwork from the fifth edition, Tales of the Yawning Portal? Yeah, very similar. But as far as the overall look of the room, I have a lot more to go on here. 
I'm going to attempt to sort of recreate the spirit of this artwork. The bench appears to be wood, and I thought I'd take a little different approach than my usual popsicle sticks with chisel. I'm going to try XPS foam. I just cut a hunk of it, and then with a wire brush, texturize it to put in the wood grain. I must admit, it is nice seeing it more properly to scale, and it's certainly easier to pull off. I don't know about the final look, we'll see. Then I've got some thin, thin cardstock. This is, actually, it's basically paper. It's 30 pound cardstock, but it might as well be a heavy printer paper. Cut some strips and then score them and fold them lengthwise and glued them on with white glue. This is like a metal banding. Painting, keeping it simple, solid base coat of a dark umber and a dry brush with a cinnamon type of brown. For better or worse, I try to avoid washes wherever I can, so that's it. The banding on all the corners gets a simple gray gunmetal, and then a shading with Agrax Earthshade. Now for a Cyrax skull itself. Again, back to the GW Skulls collection. I found a good one that appears to be human-like and of a proper scale to my other 28mm miniatures. Quick drilling of the hole and super glue a paper clip to make this easier to paint, make a little temporary handle on it. Painting is easy, it's a skeleton bone cream color, and then a wash with Agrax Earthshade, and finally with an insane detail brush, getting some red into the eyes to illustrate the ruby gemstones. Since the bench is foam, I can just impale this down in there, so I cut a length of it, stuck it in, and a little bit of white glue, good to go. A Cyrax skull, done. Now what else do we have? There's some potions on there next to it. So we'll back to my usual rainbow beads with Toho seed beads for the stoppers, connecting them together with super glue. Made just a few of those, clustered them together on the bench along with the skull, and now it's time to attach the bench to the floor for good. It's all starting to come together now. I'm liking it. This is a leftover Miseria Cordia bit from a Warhammer 40k Adeptus Custodes model. As you can see, I have already painted it, mounted it on a paper clip, and it too can impale directly into the foam. Although the floor just looks a little bit unfinished, so I tried to weather it up with a simple black wash. Then, for the copious amounts of gold and treasure around, I started with a blob of hot glue to create the bulk of the pile of the coins. And it's a treasure pile. Oh, well, you know what that means. <laughs> yes, bejeweling. And it's appropriate, too. It's my lucky day. Anyways, bejeweling, and I've got some gold glitter here that I wanted to try. It's a big, chunky glitter. Kind of looks like coins. A little bit large, but I figured I'd try it. Also, once again, raiding my costume jewelry bin. Looking for things that would pass as treasures. And here it is at the I think I'm done point. Now, I've talked about this before. When you think you're done, you're really not. And something about this just isn't tied together for me. I narrowed it down to a few things, and here's what I did. First of all, the skull is tiny, and it is technically the final boss, I hate to use that word, but it's the big bad of the dungeon. Technically, it's to scale, but <sighs> I would just like it to be more prominent. And I really want to use real gemstones in the eyes, so I have this Halloween bead. I, I don't remember where it came from. It's way too big. But again, I'm going to take some artistic license. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. That gold glitter is actually multicolored depending on what angle you're looking at it. So it doesn't come off as gold coins. It, it's really cool looking, but I just don't want to use it here. So I covered that with white glue and then hit it with a genuine, very fine gold glitter. This stuff's expensive, so I hoard it. This larger replacement skull gets the exact same paint job as before. Now for the eyes, oh boy. I've thought I had done detail work before. These are, I think, two millimeter flat back gemstones. And if I like tear open this package, the plastic is gonna spring and these are gonna rain all over the room and I'll never find them again. So I had to extract them from the package with a surgical precision and to really think about it. Yes, and there they are. The two that will be used as the eyes. And you can see how big they are relative to my tweezers and fingernails. They are set into the eye sockets with simple white glue. Tearing out the old skull and putting in the new one 
This can be seen from three feet away. The eyes glint very nicely, and we'll get a beautiful close-up of this in just a minute. Going to the floor. Again, I know it's mithril, but maybe the floor isn't. Again, artistic license. Painted it with a dark gray, and then with a light gray, painted on some uh, cobblestone, flagstone, offs, I don't know what it's called. It's like this, some random stone blocks. And then once that's dry, the same plain old 10 to 1 black paint wash. Played around with it, tried some texturing, ended up dabbing it, and that's just going to be much more interesting to look at. So, let's look at it. Yes! So you can see the shell fits around that floor insert, and the shell itself is sized exactly so that it fits in the tile. And there's room for all the miniatures as normal. Perfect. So let's go ahead and take the shell off, take a look at what's inside. Shazam, folks. There it is. Let's get another look at the inspirational image from the 5th edition Tales of the Yawning Portal and look at them side by side. Honestly, I <laughs> I think I nailed it. This, I think this is pretty awesome. Yes, you can see some bits of glue. Remember, my camera is zoomed in all the way. You are seeing sins that you would never see with the human eye at the table. This thing truly came out awesomely. I, I could not be happier with a Sierra X Final Vault. And now, the entire Tomb of Horrors. Had a little problem. The footprint of the entire dungeon is almost seven feet by almost nine feet. Too big for a table. I want it to be on a surface that's got a single neutral color, so wood grain doesn't work, floors don't work, carpet the pieces won't stay together correctly, nor will they on a sheet. Eventually I came to the conclusion that I need to paint my garage floor. So I did. I painted my garage floor for this project. A decision that will age horribly, as you can already see where the other car normally sits and the tires have already peeled up some of the paint. But in front of the other car, for this one shining moment, it is fresh and pure and exactly what I need. As I was setting it up, it was sort of like a construction zone with the floodlights. My wife walked out at one point and took this picture. A lot of you had a little bit of fun with that on Facebook. I was particularly amused at one comment that said, this perfectly encapsulates both victory and defeat at the same time. But I was not defeated. I was just tired. It took an hour and 10 minutes to set this up in my 90 degree high humidity garage. And when it was done,
few quick notes about the practical reality of a project like this. Organization is key. There's almost a hundred tiles, and all of them are labeled on the underside. Some of these are multiple tiles broken into one, like hallway 15, for example, so number X of Y also goes on the back. If you're gonna undertake a project like this, make sure you do that as you go. Don't leave it for later. Hey, here's a question for you. Have you ever used so much small scatter terrain in one sitting that you literally needed a broom to sweep it all up afterwards? I have. And let this be a testament to the durability of my construction methods. Look at all those chipboard clip-ons. Perfectly fine, not a one was damaged in this cleanup effort. Nice. And now a trigger warning for those of you who are aroused by Tetris. For now, there are two large cardboard boxes that all of this fits into, but I'll eventually move it over to one big plastic tote. Smart way to pack is the big stuff first, the things that are your constraints. So the largest tiles go in first, and also anything that's gonna go the full length or width of the box, that should also go in first. I did permanently hot glue some of the scatter terrain to the tiles, the stuff that's flat and unlikely to be knocked off, but those tiles I try and put towards the top so that there's less weight on them. After all, really the only reason for this thing's existence is to take to conventions and set up on display. I don't intend to ever actually run it. So there you have it, the most infamous module of all time rendered without compromise. Hey, if you're interested in good Dungeons & Dragons modules, why not check out my Etsy store? I've published three of them and they're real cheap. I'm also on Patreon, but most importantly, come find us on Facebook, the Tabletop Crafters Guild, over 30,000 members, making great stuff for their tabletop gaming. Okay, now I'm not reading from a script, so this will be a little disjointed, uh, just sort of stream of consciousness. I know it's annoying to listen to that kind of thing, but uh, thank you to everyone for the support getting through this project. It's not like it was a, a hardship for me or anything. It was an epic undertaking. Um, what I'm really referring to is the hiatus I took um, toward the end of last year. Thank you for the words of encouragement. My hope is that this series of 10 videos stands as a legacy forever as a love letter from me to a hobby that has treated me so greatly and keeps swinging me perpetual ad revenue. Man, I feel good. Uh, for some reason though, it just doesn't quite feel like the end of a journey. Why is that? I'm Wylock. See you next time. Make things and play games.